Welcome back to Passing the Torch. Our final segment tonight features Tom Heinsohn sitting down with Jason Tatum. And let me tell you, as a guy who gets advice from Tommy Heinsohn all the time, I can imagine how valuable <laughs> an experience this is for Jason Tatum. So Tommy points for JT. How you doing? <laughs> well, listen, you're, you've been terrific. One of the big questions for a, a player like you who's an offensive player, going to be a, a bona fide, uh, strong offensive player in the league, is uh, every once in a while you have a clunker. And I saw you in a clunker game where it just didn't work all night long. And uh, one of the things that I'd like to convey to you is how do you come back from that emotionally and mentally? Uh, one thing that I've learned um, for being in the NBA is it's 82 games. So no matter how good you play one night or how bad you play, um, all that matters is if you win and then you usually play the next day or the day after that. So um, you got to move on to the next game. And uh, that makes it a little bit easier where in college, if you had a bad game, you had five or six days in between to think about it. Um, so that could be a little tougher. But now that you're in the NBA, um, you know, you got 82 games, so the next one's coming like that. So you got to get your mind off of it. Well, I, I brought this up because uh, uh, I, I've seen you have one of those, and I want to relate uh, my own personal story. I can remember playing in my, uh, up in Syracuse, New York, and I missed five uncontested layups in this game. <laughs> All right? And I was beside myself. And the next night we played at Madison Square Garden against the Knicks. And I was making baskets, laying on the floor, shooting hook shots from half court. So the whole thing changes dramatically if you just have the same attitude you were talking about. I heard you were on the first ever Celtics NBA championship team. Right. What was that experience like? Well, uh, the final game was a uh, seventh game and it was a double overtime. And it was the first and only double overtime final seventh game of a, of a playoff. Bill Russell and I were rookies. And the more famous players were Bob Cousy and uh, Bill Sharman who were uh, Hall of Fame backcourt people. And both of them had terrible games. Uh, there was something like four for 40. Mm. Couldn't buy a basket. They were so anxious to win the title after going for several years not winning it. And I had a great game. I had 37 points. It was terrific that we won it. The funny part about it was there were no parades then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no parades whatsoever. What happened is they allowed us to be in a motorcade during the uh, Boston Marathon. And we got a chance to ride in a car for the marathon runners before they ran <laughs> all the people lined up. And we got to the Lenox Hotel, which was right at the end of, of the finish line. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Who was the best player you played against? Because I figure Bill Russell probably was the best player you played with. So who was the best player you played against? Well, uh, Wilt. But Wilt uh, played, that was Russell's problem. <laughs> he had a deal with Wilt. Uh, the best players I played against were Bob Pettit and uh, Elgin Baylor. Uh, both of them were, Elgin Baylor was the first real high flyer. He, he'd get into the paint and overpower people, uh, but he didn't have an outside shot. Right. So they kind of were able to handle him for the first year a little bit. But then he developed an outside shot, and boy, I'll tell you, he was alone. Who's the toughest guy for you to play? I would probably say LeBron. Oh, <laughs> Just because that, that playoff series we had, um, my, my rookie year in Eastern Conference Finals, going seven games and playing playing him seven times in a row, uh, you really get to appreciate, um, you know, what he means. That is a novel experience playing against a guy seven times. It really is. Yeah. It really is. What does it mean for you to, you know, be a part of the Boston Celtics and the tradition? 
You know, what it meant to me was I had so much fun. I was doing something I loved to do. And if you're a person uh, who enjoys what you're doing, life is fun. It's not working. And uh, the people, when you're with a group of people that know how to win, it's really fun because everybody's involved with uh, the effort and the result, not their own personal gain. You guys, from what I can see, have that same attitude where you're going out there and whatever, we're going to do whatever is necessary to get done. So this organization, has it influenced you at all? It definitely has. Um, I've learned so much about the Celtics um, that I didn't previously know uh, before I got here. And, you know, my appreciation for guys like yourself, Bill Russell and Paul and all the guys before me, um, just coming in here to work every day to see the banners. Um, and, you know, you feel the energy, the atmosphere, the fans are the best. And it's not like that in every every city we go to. You know, we truly have the best fans. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really is a sense of pride, you know, putting that jersey on every night and uh, couldn't be happier being there. Well, it, it's both a blessing and a curse, all right? I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a blessing that uh, you've, you are picked to be in this organization because of the history. They think you can fit in, mm -hmm. but then the curses you gotta deliver, right? Uh, I think, personally, I think you're gonna be an all-star player for a long, long time. You have the scorer's mentality. Put it aside, I'm making it, I'm missing it, I'm shooting, that's what I am. And that's a great asset. Uh, anytime you wanna bounce something off of me, feel free to do it. Will do. Thank you. My pleasure. Good to see you, and I wish you the best. Appreciate that. The torch has been passed. So let's see what this current Celtic team can do with it. And thank you for joining us.